Welcome back. As a part of this video, we'll understand how does business requirements in data warehouse look like. As a part of the previous video, we understood what is ETL testing. So how do we proceed now? What needs to be done? First and foremost thing is we need to understand the requirements. If you want to perform the ETL testing without understanding the requirements, how will you proceed with the ETL testing? So we need to understand the requirements. But how does requirements look like in ETL? Any idea? Before we really get into that, what exactly is the business requirement? Business requirement is a document. We also call it as a BRD or SRS or PRD. SRS is software requirement specification. PRD is product requirement document. So any BRD or a business requirements document is a formal report that details all the objectives or requirements of the project or a program or a business solution which is being built. It also describes why are we really building this product? Why are we really building the data warehouse in the current context? And also it describes business need or objective along with what is expected as the project proceeds. As usual, in the similar fashion as that of other projects, there'll be business requirement document or software requirement specification or product requirement document as a part of any project. So the same thing would be there as a part of the data virus project as well. But there are two documents which are very important as a part of the BRD in data virus. And they are first and foremost thing is the mapping document. We also call it as a mapping sheet. The second one is a document which consists of a schema for the source and also for the target. What exactly ETL mapping sheet is? ETL mapping sheet contains all the information, literally all the information of source and destination, including each and every column and their transformation in the reference tables and their lookup in reference tables. It also includes what kind of a transformation being done on different columns. The second one is DB schema of the source and the target. When you say schema, we are talking about the structure of the source tables and also the target tables. We need to have that also as a part of the BRD. Let us take a look at the mapping document, one of the representative project of banking domain. If you look at here, this is a mapping document. Usually it will be there as a part of the Excel sheet, but we have copied and pasted that here for your reference. If you see here, we have source table name. Source table name is account, SRC account, SRC account, and the target table name. We can also call DWH table name as a target table name, which happens to be DWH account, DWH account. Now, within the source, which is from the source table name, we have account number, customer ID, BR code, account type. And also there, if you see, what fields or what columns need to be there as a part of the target are also mentioned here. You can see here, the data types is also mentioned here. You can see what kind of a transformation has to happen before the data is moved from the source to target. In this case, left pad zero to make it 10 digit. Means if you have account number, let us say, assume that it is eight digits. So we should add two zeros here. Any account numbers, if it is 10, we should not touch that. In case if it is less than 10, you have to pad zeros to make the whole account number as a 10 digit. Like that, you can see different source tables here. This is a SRC customer, SRC branch. This is a SRC payment. So the mapping document literally contains all the details of what are the source tables, what are the target tables, what should be the source field name, what should be the target field name and also what kind of transformation needs to be done before you move the data from source to target. Isn't it awesome? So in terms of schema, you also need to know what is the source schema. For example, here we have a source customer. In this, the structure has some one, two, three, four, five, six, six columns. It would also have what kind of a data types. And then in the target, on the other hand, you have five column names. Why is that? Because as a part of the transformation, these two column names are combined into one. So as a part of the BRD, 
you should also look for if they have mentioned what is the schema on the source what is the schema on the target wonderful we understood what are business requirements and how do they look as a part of the data warehouse project thank you mm-hmm.